So today I'm going to tell you about the 1980s. And the first thing you need to know about the 1980s was that cars were terrible. At the end of the 70s and into the early 80s, performance was dismal. So some of you might think that just because the car behind me is relatively slow and it's full of gold and black stickers, that it's not a good car. Quite the contrary. You see, the car behind me is absolutely amazing, and there's a very good chance at the end of this episode, I might take it home. Y'all might be wondering why I'm wearing a cowboy hat. I'm going to tell you. Right now I'm behind the wheel of what is perhaps my third favorite car on the planet Earth. My first is a 1972 Lamborghini Miura SV. Wanted that car since I first saw it. I think it's the sexiest thing ever made. And one of these days with a little help from my government and Lotto, maybe I'll get a chance to obtain it. My second, my 1968 Dodge Charger. Love, love that car. My rock. The third, the third, and the car that got me into motoring when I was a kid, that piqued my imagination, was this one. This is a 1981 Firebird Turbo Trans Am. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I said Turbo Trans Am. Now the hat, the hat pays homage to Burt Reynolds. Who's Star Burt Reynolds? What do, you, what do you mean, who's Burt Reynolds? I don't know who Burt Reynolds You know who, shut up, you know who Burt Reynolds is. <laughs> So Burt Reynolds starred in two of my favorite movies, one of which was The Cannonball Run, and the second was Smokey and the Bandit. Now, Smokey and the Bandit, it was basically a two-hour commercial for the Pontiac Trans Am. It came out in 1977, and all of a sudden, it just sparked a rebirth into these cars. The Turbo Trans Am was actually featured in Smokey and the Bandit 2, which is one of the reasons I love it, because the simple fact, not only do I love Burt Reynolds, but Dom DeLuise was in that movie, and I think he's one of the funniest guys. You know who Dom DeLuise is? Dom DeLuise is funny. You know, okay. <laughs> that said it, so you know it's true. That's why this is one of my favorites. A lot of you people remember the Trans Ams from the early 70s, 1970, 72, 73, 74, when they actually had muscle, when they had power, right? They were pretty much the same basic shape as what you see here. But over the years, things started to change, and change a lot. The Trans Ams from, say, 1975 on, got hit with smog regulations. What the smog regulations did was absolutely strangle, strangle the power of these cars. They went from used to having 400 plus horsepower down to 150 horsepower. It was terrible. Let's get something out of the way right now. This car is not fast. It's absolutely not fast. Now also remember, in 1981, everything was slow. Turbos in the 1980s were still a brand new thing, and the engineers really didn't have a clue what the hell they were doing. Now, the 301 Turbo came out, and it was, it was just kind of premature, right? Everybody says, well, with another three or four years of development, this could have been what the Buick V6 was to the Grand National. And it just never really got a fair shake. Most people don't even realize that Pontiac built a, a turbo Trans Am. People go, did you add the turbo? Did you make the stickers? No, not at all. This is from the factory. The turbo cars were made for two years, in 1980 and 1981. This particular car is a 32,000 mile original. It's an 81 turbo Trans Am. Y84 Special Edition. It has a 301 cubic inch engine, okay? With a Garrett turbocharger on top. It's a draw through unit and it sits off to kind of the left. It's kind of the worst possible way to put a turbo on a motor, but Pontiac needed to do something with the Trans Am to keep it alive. And during the emission years, 
they said, you know what? We can make it kind of low displacement, appease the emissions people, still get some power out of it, and keep the car going for another year. 81 was the final year for this body style, the final year, okay? The car made, when new, 200 horsepower and 340 pound-feet of torque. So when this thing came out, it didn't make power. So what did Pontiac do? Well, it kind of resulted to some gimmicks. One of the gimmicks are the lights on the hood, and they actually light up as the car builds boost. And it says in big white letters, turbocharge. And as boost comes on, they go boop, 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 and they light up. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm gonna flick the light on high. I'm gonna nail it. The lights are got turbocharge! Are you nailing it yet? It's, it's kind of nailed. You heard me yell, right? What's cool about this car is what it lacked in grunt, it made up in persona, it made up in flash, it made up in bravado. Look at the big screen chicken on the hood. It has, what do we count? 12? 12. 12 chickens. 12 chickens all over this car, from the door panels to the, the hood to the tail to the to wheel covers. I mean, there are chickens everywhere on this thing. Now, when you think about the scheme on this car, it's black and gold. That's crazy disco style. The dashboard is turned gold. The center bezel, turned gold. It's got a chicken on the, on the, on the shifter. It's amazing. It's like the only possible reason that this car could exist was that GM told Pontiac designers, listen, we don't know what to do with this car, but here's an eight ball of cocaine. Go into that back room and do not come out until you design something amazing. What's cool about it is it feels like a modern car, and here's why. We have power windows, power door locks, T-tops, really amazing. All the gauges that I could ever want, even my quartz clockworks in this thing, in the tack. It's a really, really nice example of how things work. Aside from the off-kilter hood scoop on this thing, my other favorite feature are the turbo wheels. They are some of the best looking wheels I've ever seen on a car. And even though they're 15 by seven and a half or 15 by eights, they just do the right thing to this car, man. I think they look badass. Despite all the craziness that happened in the 1980s, this car in particular, I just absolutely love. Because you gotta realize, this car for me is a cartoon character, it's a superhero. It's, it's the version of Burt Reynolds as an automobile that I wanted to be when I grew up. Cars do something to us, they make you feel a certain way, and I, I don't care if this thing is slow. I love it, I love it because it makes me smile and it makes me laugh. The fact that I feel completely comfortable wearing a cowboy hat in a Trans Am is, awesome because it works with the car. The fact that the T-tops pop off and I get it, you know, open air and it just, it's got so many things that you'll never see again. And some people are going to say, yeah, for good reason. But it's, it's a time capsule. It's one of those things that shows you where America was and as gaudy and as goofy as the Pontiac Trans Am was in its later years, it is an absolute American icon and I wouldn't have it any other way. I love this car. I absolutely love it. We have no acceleration, so we really gotta wait. Here we go, ready? Turbo charge! Are you hitting it yet? Oh, it's on. You feel it? You feel it? I feel that one, two shift. Look at the light, look at the light. Come on, light. There we go, yeah! It went on. It, and we have two and a half Am I clear hours. on that side? Uh, yeah. Yep, turbo charge! Uh. 
Ready? I'm gonna do it again. Show me how fast it is. Hit the light, hit the gas. Ready? Turbo charge! See the lights? See them? Uh-huh. Oh, they just get brighter. Yeah, dude, you know why? We're in the boost, baby! Turbo charge. And by the way, every time it goes into boost and the lights light up, you have to yell turbo charge. That's just, it comes in the manual. Turbo charge! <laughs>